let's look at some other let's look at some other visualization stuff. Yeah, which is a great segue to my next step here. What if you want to do more than one visualization on the data? So we're going to add another step. And in this case, I would like to duplicate the step with all of the same objects visible. So it's the same swarm, et cetera. But I'm going to create a new visualization. I'm going to create a new template, actually. And I'm going to, instead of creating a new swarm, I'm going to update this swarm. The reason you would do that, you're going to see in just a moment. And um, like, here's a totally different visualization, a violin chart is no longer a 3D scatter plot. Instead, it's going to say, take me all of the, take all of the data points and decide how to lay them out based on something that we call additional dimensions. So, for the height offset, say how. So notice Tesla. Tesla here had a very fabulous year, and it you know went actually skyrocketed up. Um, it, this is the percentage of the portfolio uh, here. Let's fix that. Let's fix the legend, the labels first. So we'll go to the labels object. Looks like there's two of them. One of them is showing the portfolio allocation. Instead of that, let's show the percent change. So it went up 280%. You can even create columns where you say, hey, every time there's more than one dot, go ahead and create a column or create a, um, well, let's just, let's just stop there. You just get it. I, instead of doing a whole discussion of additional dimensions, you can see that now I've created a very different visualization. I'm going to put it Oops, I'm going to put it back to my original directional because I kind of like the way that looked. And now I've got two steps of my swarm and all the dots animate from one to the other. If I go into magic, into manage steps, I can make the animation a little bit longer by changing the animation duration. Now, I know that that was a quick little step there, but I just wanted you to see this nice, beautiful little animation of how the dots move from place to place. And by the way, we are showing a, you know, a very different visualization. <clears throat> so just to show off a little bit, I'm going to do that again. Let's take another new visualization. We're going to update this swarm. And OK, this is going to be a little, little tricksy here, but let's create a 3D radar chart. Now, first thing it did, it actually um, it applied these parameters in a fairly strange way. We can see exactly how they're applied here. Um, but until you kind of understand like what is a radius offset, it may not make so much sense. So a radar plot, plot says, based on um, a certain value, move the dots from the center point. And instead of portfolio allocation, I want to move the dots from the center point based on the change from this value. And on the equator, um, let's just try the date. Yeah, there we go. Now we can see that the change from norm is represented by this distance. And the, um, the over time, it's spreading out from the center point. A little strange. No, that's, I know that's this is a little sophisticated. Works. That's how 3D works. I can't. All right. I'm going to change the connections. Right now it's when the columns match something random there. Now when the columns match the index, you can see Tesla. You can, first of all, you can see Tesla shivering all over the place because it's such a volatile stock. And you can also see how wild it went. And you can see that all of the stocks started from a zero point. I think there's one da bad data point minus a hundred there. That's ugly, but you can see that they all started from roughly the same spot. Some of them went down, some of them went up from here. But again, remember what we've done is we've created a series of steps. And by doing so, you're helping someone see the same data set in these different perspectives. Mm -hmm. 